Um, it's just amazing that so many of you have. Um, thank you to the Rochester and West Penn Art Society and to Trish for this very rare opportunity to talk about my life and my work. I've, I've never done this before, so it gives me if I'm a little bit nervous because I am. But I'm going to start with a quote by Georgia O'Keefe, the American artist. And she said, I've been absolutely terrified every day of my life, but I've never let it stop me from doing the single thing I wanted to. And if you'd have asked me a few years ago to come and talk in front of so many people, I couldn't have done it through fear of panic attack, anxiety and stress. But I've used that quote as a tool to carve my way through. It's taken me a long time, but I've decided that I won't let allow those insecurities and those fears to stop me from doing what I want to anymore. I was trying to work it out how long it was that um, I didn't do my own art for. And it was about 15 to 20 years. I'd done everything else other than be an artist. I worked um, in an art shop in London in Hanover Square. I worked in NatWest Advertising Department. Then I had three children. I ran my own market business in Milton Keynes and St Albans. I worked as a learning support at an art university. But I was always on the other side of being an artist. When I was at school, I had an art teacher that believed in me and believed in my abilities. And she said to me, you'll never be happy until you follow your creative path. And she was right. But unfortunately, for so many other people that come to my club, and I'm sure many of you here, you have heard comments like, it's not a real qualification, is it? What are you going to do with that? You're good, but not that good. You're doing it all wrong. And quite frankly, you're rubbish. And it's negative comments like this that have stopped people from following their creative path. I had an art tutor, a very good art tutor at university. And when he retired, he told me that his wife said to him, I wonder what you would have become if you would not spent the last 25 years giving your life to the university. And that struck a chord with me, because I think uh, many creatives, they get stuck in jobs to pay the bills. And I've done it myself, I've just had to work two weeks, I'm working it at the moment just to pay my rent. So I understand that. Um, when my job at the university, um, I was told that I was going to be made redundant, I, I thought about what that tutor's wife said to him. And I thought, I wonder what I could become now. That was a new start for me, and the rest is history, really, with Explore and Draw. Um, Many of you here tonight um, come to Explore and Draw and supported me, and without you it wouldn't exist. And I'm grateful to you. And for anybody that wants to know about Explore and Draw, then please, um, you know, come and see me afterwards, um, and we'll exchange emails, and I'll keep you in the loop. Uh, I want to just move on to the next piece of my speech. Um, Explore and Draw was an art group 
that was inspired by two incredible artists, George Frederick and Mary Watts. And they um, believed that art was for all, and that was their ethos. They believed in social reform through spiritual enlightenment through art. And I do as well. And I think that art has the potential to change people's lives. And I know that it's changed my life. And I'm sure if you open yourself to your creative, inner creative, it will change yours too. Um, I think, uh, sorry, bear with me. George Frederick Watts also says that he paints ideas and not themes. And this is what I think I do. So I want to just talk to you really, I don't know how many of you can see them, but hopefully you can get up and have a look afterwards. But I want to talk to you about my paintings, uh, one by one. I, I don't want to spend too long, um, but I, it's a really rare opportunity to do it, so I'm, I'm going to take advantage. And then, um, after I've spoken to you about the paintings, we're just going to have a really fun experimental workshop, and I really don't want you to do a six-month oil painting. We're just going to splash the paint around afterwards. So, first of all, I want to talk to you about this painting. I painted this after the breakdown of my marriage. Um, I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing. I've sort of lost sight of this dream and it's a simple idea really. It's an idea of a woman looking up at a tree. And in some cultures, many cultures, this is the sycamore tree. And it symbolizes um, strength and protection and clarity. I use oil paints. I find them very versatile. Um, I painted the uh, background blue so that the warmth of the skin would come forward. And I worked in a very experimental way here. In the, um, when I went back to my art, I was uh, really saw myself as a portrait artist. But for a few months, I started doing some abstract paintings. I was inspired by Mark Rothko. Um, I think they said that his word was abstract expressions on the sublime. And I just fell in love with that. I thought, oh, that's lovely. That's like a portal to another world. So I sort of experimented with this abstract art. And, um, I splatted it on there, and, it, and so I didn't actually paint each individual leaf. Um, and so this painting really is me moving into the space of the artist after all those years of not really painting. And just looking up for strength, and, and you can't see the trunk, but the trunk of the tree, um, you know, you can imagine it comes down into the roots and the branches go out, and the only thing really that I'm limited by here is the canvas. Um, there was a story I want to tell you before I move on to the next painting because I've forgotten to say it and I'm kicking myself. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to say it now because it's quite important. I wanted to talk to you about ideas and um, I went to the Nobel Peace Prize Museum in Stockholm with my daughter. And when I got there, there was a corridor, um, a long white corridor, and in it were panels. And what would happen is that a panel would light up, and one of the Nobel Peace Prize winners, um, a pre-recorded video, would talk for five minutes, and then that panel would go down, and another panel would light up. And my daughter, my eldest daughter, was so, she was so excited. She was saying, Mum, Mum, this is amazing. We've got the opportunity to hear some of the greatest minds of our time. And they're talking to us. And, and we've got to listen. And her enthusiasm was so, so great, so infectious, 
But as she rang, I rang, and we listened to the Nobel Peace Prize winners. And one of them, forgive me, I can't remember who, was talking about ideas. And he said, never lose faith in your ideas. Have value them, treasure them. And he spoke about art, um, scientists that had done hundreds and thousands of experiments before they proved their theory right, because they knew they, they had faith, they believed in their ideas. And I just wanted, I didn't want to miss that bit out. And um, the next painting I want to talk to you about is this one. I hope you can see it. Um, this is called The Darkness of Grace. Um, it's an oil painting again, and it, it's painted on a black canvas. Um, I really love the traditional way of painting in layers, so I build up the painting in many layers. And I... My landlady said something to me when I was living in my new flat. She said to me, Luna, when did you limit yourself? And I thought, she went, and I thought, I don't know. I don't know when I limited myself, but I had. And I kept thinking about it, and I saw it like a... I saw it in my mind like an octopus that was strangling someone. But when you study at university, you're taught to research. And I started to research the octopus. And what I discovered was the absolute opposite. The octopus carries, uh, she, she looks after her eggs for 53 months. That's the longest time that any mammal does. She cements them in a cave. And she, with her tentacles, she wafts the water over the eggs to oxygenate them, to keep them alive. And she does this for the full term until they hatch. And she dies, when they're born, she dies of exhaustion <coughs> and starvation. <coughs> She's not this evil, demonic creature that I thought of her. She is actually known as uh, nature's greatest mother. So that completely changed my idea. And I thought, what if the octopus nurtured the child back to life? So here in this area is a, an embryo. And the octopus is nurturing the embryo. So the, the lady is looking at her inner child, really and nurturing herself back to health. And that's what that painting is about. Um, I'm going to move on. I feel quite comfortable in my paintings. <laughs> Next one. This painting, I know you can't all see it. Um, it's an oil painting, but I was really getting into the traditional methods. I, when, you, when I studied at art university, no one taught me how to paint. I studied art and design. So I just learned off of YouTube. Um, Tom Keating is amazing. So I, I learned from him. And Turner said that 100 glazes isn't enough. And this painting's got 50, about 50 glazes, and he's right. But I, I loved just working with glazes on the sky, and it's like you're polishing the canvas. And I wanted to create like an impasto effect because when I'd gone to the Watts Gallery in Compton, um, an incredible place to visit, by the way, um, he built up one of his buildings, uh, his paintings with this impasto. And I, I couldn't find it at the time, so I just ordered some lime, uh, lime stone. I think I ordered horse feet. <laughs> they sprinkle <laughs> But um, I mixed it with PDA glue and I put it on here and it, you know, it worked. Um, this painting is a trip of goddess. It's the maiden, the goddess, and the hand. I see this if you go to Kids Pose. It's got the female face, quite like this. But, and I think that this painting is really. Um, my spiritual 
emotional and physical self. I felt really happy. I was in a really good place in my life. Um, I'd met Neil, my partner. I was painting again. And for me, I found the dream. That was my dream. So that's that one. This painting, it's hard to choose what ones to bring. But this painting, um, many people watched it online. I decided that as I painted it, I was going to um, paint the stages online. And, and halfway through, I thought, what have I done? You know, this is... But it was really good for me because it made me paint every day. And I got feedback from my work. And as you know, you don't often get feedback. You can have an exhibition and no one really talks about your art. And so people were messaging me, and artists were messaging me, and they were telling me things about the painting, you know, I think you should do this, or what you... And it was so helpful, and I really appreciate that, and everyone that followed it. But this painting is called Not Agnes. And she was meant to be Agnes in the snow. But it's a very long story, and people can talk to me after if there's time or at any time, you know, in the future. But it actually became my grandmother. And um, I was questioning at the time, where do all the women's names go? You know, when you get married, you give your, you give your name up. And um, I was speaking to my mum, and she said, you know, you come from strong stock. And what she was talking about, she was talking about the maternal line in my family. She was talking about, I've got three daughters. You know, myself, my mum, she's talking about her mum, great, her grandmother, her great grandmother. And so this painting became about that. And this is my grandmother, Lily. And as I was painting her face, it was, people watch this, but it was bizarre to me. It, it looked like my youngest daughter, then my middle daughter, then my eldest daughter, then it looked like me, and it looked like my mum, and eventually I got her. And it's just talking about that all of your ancestors are in you, they come through you, they're part of you, they never really die. Um, I've placed her in the cathedral with her mother and her grandmother. And here is a trinket box, because it's the only thing that I have of her um, physical, on the physical realm. And so that's just there. Um, it was funny because when I was painting it, um, I remembered something. And my nan was a very religious and spiritual person. And when I was about 13, she decided she, she, I was old enough to go to church. And she spoke about it so beautifully and so eloquently and with so much passion that by the time I got there, I was, I was just in awe of the priest and I was staring and staring at and he just got this white glow around him <laughs> and, he, and he sort of levitated slightly. And then I remembered it when I was painting the picture and so she has this slight white glow around her. Um, all of these paintings were me coming back to my artwork and getting that confidence to the point where I thought, you know, I can paint, I can still paint. I, I hadn't painted for 15 to 20 years, but, but I'd sort of improved somehow. So I, then I thought, well, the artist is in you, isn't it? It must be in you if that's the case. And this is really, um, I've only been working Sorry, I've only been working on this one a little while and I don't really want to talk about it in great detail like I have the others. And it's, um, but I just want to show you that my style is changing. I am loosening up now. Um, I don't have to be so tight anymore. I'm playing. I'm experimenting. Um, and this is what the workshop's going to be about today. And I just encourage you to have a little play. Um, I've been working with a musician, and um, I've been, he's been playing some music, and I've been making some art, just shutting my eyes and drawing, and I've got all examples of this. And I think when we set up, if anyone wants,
wants to grab some paper in the workshop and have a go. We're just going to make some backgrounds, and, and I'll, I think I'll talk about that afterwards. So, um, yeah, well, I'll talk about the workshop afterwards, but I hope that I've inspired you this evening. I, I thought long and hard about what I was going to say, um, and it causes a lot of anxiety and stress because I'm so passionate about it and I care about it. But I, I really want you to value your ideas, treasure them, nurture them, write them down, follow your creative path, and become the artist. What is it now? That you always knew you was. That wasn't it, was it? <laughs> No, become the artist. You're always meant to be. You're always meant to be.